Hello and welcome to another video tutorial from ComputerGaga.com. This tutorial will look at how to add resources in Microsoft Project. Now I've got Microsoft Project 2010 in front of me at the moment uh, with a small project as well on screen. And I would like to have resources, whether they be, be people, be work resources, whether they be kit like laptops or bricks or paint or paper, uh, or whether it be cost resources, you know, to record expenses such as accommodation and travel. I want to be able to make notes of these in the project. I want that extra functionality and to have the names of these resources, or these teams or these individuals doing that work next to each bar. Now there are many ways of how to add resources and assign them to work in Microsoft Project, but possibly the the most full-on way of adding resources with the most options and ability is to use the resource sheet. And we can switch to our resource sheet by on our task tab at the top, clicking the drop down arrow for Gantt chart and switching to the resource sheet, which is a big sheet of paper really where we can uh, start adding in our resources uh, with various information about them. And you can see I have five resources already in here, I've got three three people, two bits of kit. Uh, these at the moment are all recorded as work resources. Now there's three types of uh, resource in Microsoft Project. You've got work resources, material and cost. Work resources have a calendar, so they're time based and when I assign Kathy to do some work it would ask me how much time um, Kathy will be working on that task per day. Uh, can she commit all of her time, eight hours a day, half of her time, 20% of her time and so on. If you decide to use costs in your project it would also associate them costs with some kind of time based figure such as per hour, per day, per week etc. Material resources uh, are tangible objects, they, they use another measurement unit so they are assigned to work and costed by that unit such as per item, per pallet, you know, per tin, per litre these kind of things. And cost resources, nice and simple, it's just an expense typically. It's an easy way of assigning you know, train costs or hotel costs, lunch costs, stuff like these two tasks uh, for you to report on. To set up a resource you simply put in the either the individual's name or, or it may be uh, the type of job they do or in some cases it's just the name of a team all depends on what level you're reporting why are you using projects, what information do you want to get out well, what, what, do you, what do you need to communicate, what do you need to report and that will give you ideas as to how to enter them and to how far you want to go on here as well, resources are very intense a lot of power, a lot of detail most people in my experience don't require all of that so without getting too you know, intense with the confusion of it all, just to keep things simple, that's what you need, go for it. If you need more, project's capable of doing a lot more. So this is team one. Assign this work resource will allow me to use a calendar, very typical for a team or a person that they would be a work resource. I do see some people using material resource because they don't need the complexities of working with hours and days and stuff. So it keeps things simple for them. But typically, you know, they're intended to be work resources, they are time based uh, as you wish, we can put that in the material column is only there for material resources so if I did have a material resource typical things like paint that would be material this label could be something like litres yeah it's the unit that I would assign I'd say I need 5 litres of paint you know, I need a whole day of work out of, out of team 1 so it's the way that you assign them depending on whether you need a calendar or whether you need a, an associated measurement unit. Uh, we've got a group in, this is a free text field to help you find uh, you know, certain resources. If you do have a list of resources, if you have say 200 resources, this group can help you filter out and find the resource you need. You can find information on how to do that um, in my tutorial on how to assign resources to tasks uh, at computerguardguard.com. Uh, we've got max units, this is only required for work resources, you see material doesn't require it, they are not time based, they are measurement unit based. It's going to be how much time can that resource commit to the project, 
100% is all of their time. I could say half of their time. Depending on what level I need it. Some people also do things like 200% um, as a way of removing some of the over allocation problems or to say that I need I have two of them people. Maybe not two cafes, but uh, <laughs> an example that you might have put engineer, two engineers. We can then put a rate if you wish. Defaults to hours. So I could put that cafe earns £20 an hour. Or we can do switches such as 200 forward slash D to say daily rate. Or we can say 25,000 forward slash Y for 25,000 a year salary. And so on and so forth. 1,000 uh, forward slash W for £1,000 a week. Uh, we can put in these different rates. Uh, and project will calculate that for us should we want to use costings. Overtime rate. You only enter an overtime rate if it's different to the standard rate. If it's the same, we can happily leave that. Cost per use is a one-off cost, which could be instead of or as well as the standard rate. How they accrued, start pro rata or end pro rata, so that you know if this if I had a task for two weeks, Billy was on it one. One week of that work had already been done. We're fifty percent of the way through. I have spent a thousand pound of a possible two thousand. So it's pro right. It's calculating as you go, as progress is made. Start and end kind of do what they sound a tin really. End is fairly typical uh, surface, you know, typical kind of service uh, task where payment is made at the end once the job is done, and not as you go. And finally, really a, a calendar field where. You can assign uh, resource calendars. You can assign a calendar to a resource. You know, if they they work weekends, they work nights, part time. Um, we we have that ability. Leaving it a standard. This is just following my base calendar. You know, no, no different. Just keep it simple and follow the base calendar. But the potential is there. So the last type of resource, really, apart from these, I should mention material. Uh, so the standard rate, we can put in rates as well. We can't do over time rate because it's not time based. But we can do the one off cost per use. And we can do standard rate. But it won't be per time. Instead of a put £20, that would be £20 per litre. It's immediately associated with your material label. Obviously no calendar either. For obvious reasons. So the last one really is a cost resource. All we do for that is we put in a name for the resource. We try again because I can't type. Oh, shots travel, and um, we said that is a cost resource, and that is it. Now, when we assign it, we put the cost in at that point, not at this point. It's not something that project calculates. It's a variable cost. So I'll travel for that task. That costs fifty-three pound. Now, oh, I want need travel in this cost. We just spent one hundred and ten pounds on travel. So these are your three types of resources, and initially we need to add them into the project so that we can then use them. We can as then assign them to work and produce various reports on them. But first of all, we need to define the resources in the project. We need to add them in here. And that is what we do on a resource sheet for to be able to utilise these extra abilities such as time, costs, calendars, should you wish to use them. Probably a big S on that should. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this tutorial useful. Please check out some other tutorials at computergaga.com.